Did you notice tiny Jean Porter, who played Helen Ingersoll until the end of time? After being a child actress back in the 30s, uh, Jean appeared in numerous films throughout the 1940s and the 50s, too, including a role opposite Ronald Reagan and Shirley Temple. That was in that Hagen girl, of course. But it was her work in this movie, the one that we just saw, that would have a lasting effect, really, upon her life. Director Edward Dimitrik was so impressed with Jean, who was only five feet tall, that their association on this film spawned a romance and their eventual marriage. Now, in 1948, Jean stood by Edward Dimitrik during the famous or infamous McCarthy era when he was fined and imprisoned by the House and American Activities Committee. While he couldn't work for several years, he was eventually able to resume his career and work with his wife again in 1955 when he directed her in The Left Hand of God. Uh, that was Gene Porter's last film, incidentally. We'll be right back, but first let's look at this. April is National Cable Month, and you're invited to discover the difference on American movie classics. From a festival featuring movie masquerades to a spectacular Academy Awards tribute, it's a month of great Hollywood entertainment. First, American movie classics presents Movie Masquerades, a festival of films where things are not always as they seem. Oh, I don't know who anybody is. Cary Grant, Audrey Hepburn, Walter Matthau, and James Coburn are the players in a dangerous game of charade. Then, Miriam Hopkins is a poor little rich girl masquerading for love in Wise Girl, co-starring Ray Milland. Next, Ava Gardner conceals a secret, but Robert Mitchum knows the truth of My Forbidden Past. Mm -hmm. And Movie Masquerades continues when Marilyn Monroe proves to Monty Woolley that you're as young as you feel. Very pretty. Now what? Also in April, American Movie Classics salutes National Cable Month with a tribute to the Academy Awards. It's a star-studded festival of Oscar-winning classics like State Fair with Dana Andrews, Gene Crane, and the delightful music of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Alfred Hitchcock's Suspicion with Cary Grant and Oscar winner Joan Fontaine. The Gay Divorcee, featuring the toe-tapping magic of Astaire and Rogers. None But the Lonely Heart, starring Cary Grant and Ethel Barrymore. And the Oscar-winning Breaking Away. Okay, kid. Wherever we're going, how do we get there? National Cable Month continues with Marlon Brando in the action-packed western Appaloosa. Dana Andrews, Gene Tierney, and Carl Malden co-star in Otto Preminger's mystery, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And there's music, 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 when Gloria DeHaven, Dennis Day, and June Haber compare notes in I'll Get By. It's lovely. No fooling around. In April, we're celebrating National Cable Month with a big splash. Uh, I had a premonition. From movie masquerades to an Oscar-winning tribute, discover the difference, April, on American Movie Classics. We're back. If somebody brings up the term costume designer to most people in the industry, and to many people outside of the industry, the names Edith Head, uh, Helen Rose, and Jean-Louis immediately come to mind. Movies are so popular that they have become a very influential medium and are often responsible for how we perceive the past and the present and the future, regardless of what we've read in the history books. And this makes the costume designer, as a result, one of the most important people in the back lots of every studio because they, they can really make or break a movie. No matter how much research or detail and historical accuracy is put into a film, the costume designer will oftentimes be unconsciously influenced by the fashion designs of the day. A good example of what I mean uh, would be if we were to look at the way Cleopatra has been portrayed on film. While her story has been told many, many times, the three probably most famous Cleopatras were Theda Barra, that was back in 1917, uh, Claudette Colbert's, that was in 1934, and of course the famous Elizabeth Taylor version of 1963. Although all three films uh, boasted uh, historical accuracy, when they're examined closely, they all really did reflect contemporary fashions. Uh, here's an idea. There's the Theda Barra one in 1917. And next we'll go to uh, Claudette Colbert, 
I believe. We'll take a look at her. That was 1934. And, of course, we go on to the... Now, you can see 1934 more or less in that. Now, here is definitely the 60s with Elizabeth Taylor, as we knew and loved her. And a lot of people did. As we can see in these pictures, the costume details, such as the material and jewelry, the hairstyles and the makeup, were not only contemporary in their day, but also were suited to fit each actress's particular on-screen image. So much for historical accuracy. I guess that's the way it goes. If you'd like to learn more about the history and the importance of the Hollywood costume designer, there's a fascinating exposition that's been touring the United States called Costume Design on Film. It was out in the Los Angeles area. It's left there, but uh, if you're on the East Coast, you'll be able to catch it at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and it will be there from June 1st until August 14th. And if you get a chance to see it, I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So look for it. We'll be right back, but first here's something interesting from our film archives.